Look at my African American. And you're working hard to put food on your family. If it, if it, if it, if it, chocolate, chocolate chip. Oh. Before we start, has everyone here watched Cora? It feels like Nickelodeon didn't even want me to watch Cora after they pulled it from TV. Nick did Cora dirty, but I still watched it on Netflix anyway. I've seen everything except the second season. That's probably for the best. Why is it not good? It's kind of like the difference between taffy and black licorice. Can you give me a metaphor that doesn't make you sound like you're 150 years old? He literally is 150 years old. We'll talk more about season two when we get to it. Strap in, boys. It's going to be a long one. I think Tenzin is a good character to start us off. He definitely had one of the highest expectations from Avatar fans, being one of Aang's kids and the only airbending master. He didn't live up to many of those expectations either. Tenzin really isn't anything like Aang. Is that really a bad thing, though? Tenzin being a carbon copy of Aang wouldn't have worked for the role he played in the story. I'm not saying he needed to be a copy, but if they didn't say so from the start, would you have guessed he was Aang's son? I think the gigantic blue arrow kind of gives it away. He's got more of Katara's uptight and protective personality. And I don't blame him. From the moment he was born, he had a ton of responsibility raising the next generation of airbenders and then teaching Korra. He's still got some silly moments too, though. Woohoo! The fire ferrets come from way behind and- That's fair enough. I guess I didn't start warming up to Tenzin until season three. Restoring the Air Nation was definitely his biggest achievement. And his fight with Zaheer was very cool. Ultimately, he didn't live up to the hype of being Aang's kid, but at the same time, Tenzin was never supposed to be Aang. He's also still a really important character. Being voiced by J.K. Simmons doesn't hurt either. I think he should go in A tier. I think you just like bald people, Joe. All right, next up is Amon. His character design is very cool. It's hard to find a more threatening character in Korra or Avatar than Amon. Well, yeah, that's pretty much all he does. What do you mean? Uh, he's just standing there, menacingly. His bending was too OP for Korra to win in a fight head on. I thought they handled that pretty well by making the core conflict of the season more about the politics than needing to physically defeat him. Once he got outed as a fraud by the public, he was basically defeated. Now that I'm thinking of it, why didn't he just kill everyone that found out he was a bloodbender? Just cause a massacre in the middle of God and everyone? Why not? Says the dude that did 9-11. That's besides the point. Even though his powers were a little crazy, Amon was a beautifully written character. Noah Tech and Tarlock's deaths made me want to crawl into a ball. That felt way too dark for Nickelodeon. It will be just like the good old days. Korra airbending for the first time was also a really good scene that wouldn't have been possible without him. I'm torn between A and B tier. He's at nah, least he's A tier. he's definitely better than B tier. Now's a good time to talk about his brother. The problem with Tarlock is that his brother is just more interesting than he is. As cool as their backstory was, it never really got explained why he ended up in Republic City and what he was actually trying to do there. Like, okay, you're trying to work within the system and gain power lawfully, but then you attack the Avatar? Let's not forget about when he took her to a cabin in the middle of nowhere and then got clapped instantaneously. I don't think he was ever really meant to be that intriguing as a character outside of his connection to his brother and his father. He was just a way to get Korra closer to Amon and drop clues about his powers. I'm just going to go ahead and put him in F tier. Batar Jr. is the biggest simp in the entire Avatar universe. No other man has simped harder than Batar. What about Batar Sr.? He's not much better. Zhao Futek is pretty cool, but he had no personality. Dude goes in D tier for calling Toph his mother. So, how have you been, mother? I told you never to call me that. Asami. She's absolutely the best girl. I think you meant Korra? Korra is nowhere near the best girl. What are you fucking talking about? She's the main goddamn character. Asami is just different, and you know it. Asami gives me Big Mary Sue vibes. There's nothing wrong with strong female characters, and besides, there's reasons why she's so skilled. You gotta agree, though, she's used as a plot convenience a lot. Besides that, she doesn't have a ton of personality. I kind of see her as Korra's Sokka. What are you talking about? She's nothing about? like Sokka. If you dumbasses would let me finish, she's like Sokka in that she's the smart non-bender that does a lot of the problem solving for the group. She's still nothing like Sokka. I didn't say she's exactly like Sokka in every way, dipshit. I think we're all forgetting the elephant in the room. Especially you because of your dementia. What is it? Asami is hot as fuck. What that does that have matter. to do with anything? Can we all at least agree that Asami and Korra did Mako dirty? Hardcore. I can't argue that. Korra completely ruined Masami. They're scissoring in the spirit world now. What is wrong with you? If I were Mako, I'd honestly kill myself. All right, where's she going? She should be in C tier. You're absolutely insane. She should go in S. C tier is too harsh. Let's just split the difference and put her in B. She's getting lifted up to A tier by the end of this night. Yeah, right. 
What do you guys think of her dad? I don't understand why Hiroshi did the things he did at all. I mean, sure, your wife is dead, but you're rich, so why does it matter? Of course you would say that. I think it was a nice touch to bring him back. Only to kill him off. We also never got to see Asami grieve. Hiroshi peaked when he was in that goofy mech suit, bodying everybody. The season one mech fights were really cool. Also, let's not forget that he's literally the inventor of cars and planes in this universe. Damn, I forgot about that. You forget a lot of things, to be fair. Check back with me after you're in prison for mishandling top secret documents. I've beat the case many times before, and I'll do it again, Brandon. Something tells me you're going to have to do the race this time, Donald. His impact on the story is A-tier, but his character motivations are mid. He's not on the same level as Asami, just stick him in C tier. Boomy. He's the closest this series gets to Asaka. Don't forget about Varric. Both are pretty close. He's got some cool moments, like rescuing everyone in season two. Or when he became an airbender. He's got a lot of charm, but I don't think he played a significant enough role in the story to be above B tier. I don't know about that. Are you really saying he's on Tenzin and Amon's level? Are you really saying he's above Asami? That's exactly what we're saying. He just doesn't have the level of depth I'd want from one of Aang's children. Again, they weren't trying to make Aang's kids exactly like him. That's not what I'm talking about. Being raised by Aang and Katara and living as a United Forces general, you'd think his dialogue would be a little more well-rounded and not just wacky zany all the time. Now that you mention it, a lot of the dialogue in Korra wasn't really that good. Looks like you had some car trouble. Good thing the police are here. We'll keep him in B for now. Unlike Boomy, Kaya doesn't even have a charming personality. Didn't she show up randomly in season two with like no explanation or introduction? Pacing and dialogue was at its worst in season two in general though. That's not all, Kaya was completely absent in season four. The script simply did not have time for her. For being Aang and Katara's only waterbending child, she was very disappointing. Is this one Eska or Desna? I think it's Eska. At least Eska had sort of a personality with her thing for Bolin. They also realized their dad was crazy. When did that happen? Season two. The fact that it took them that long to realize their dad was evil is insane, though. They don't deserve credit for that. I say C tier unless anyone says otherwise. That sounds good. Wait, this one is Eska because of the eyeliner. Damn it. Put her in C and then put Desna in D. All right, here's where we can talk about how terrible season two was. This dude was such a prick. Trump, you can deafen if you don't want to get spoiled. Can I start off by saying that his motivations made absolutely no goddamn sense and the whole dark Avatar thing was dumb as hell. I think it had potential. The Avatar won lore with Rava and Vatu was cool. They just ruined it with how the final part of the season played out. Oh, let's turn into Kaiju and fly through the Harmonic Convergence portal to battle at Republic City for no goddamn reason. Season two just tried to do way too much. The Civil War plot thread just got completely dropped for the Dark Spirits. They also completely retconned how spirits work from Avatar. You're telling me the only way to deal with spirits is with this super secret water bending technique that only Mr. Spirit Guy conveniently knows? Otherwise, they're just invincible monsters? The spirits seemed a lot more one dimensional in Korra than they were in Avatar. Like, could you honestly see Hei Bai or the painted lady fitting in with the canon of Korra? They did bring back Wang Shutong. Only as a plot device. Are you guys done yet? Almost. Is season two really that bad? Have you not heard anything about it? The only thing I know is that Korra lost her connection to the other avatars. Oh my god, I almost forgot about that. That was so fucking dumb. Put Unulak in F tier. Come on, shouldn't we give some credit to the gaslighting king? I don't know how Korra kept falling for his obvious manipulation. Next is Iroh. Awesome name, awesome voice actor, a whole lot of wasted potential. This dude did jack shit after season one and it was such a waste. He can't go higher than C because of that. Are you sure he shouldn't get bumped up to B for the airplane scene? You cannot be serious. Iroh's got like 10 lines in the entire series. He's not on Asami's level. Gazan. He's got a cool ability, a sense of humor, and a nice mustache. What isn't there to love? He did take the coward's way out. Kind of a bitch move if you ask me. It's either that or wooden boat prison for the rest of eternity. He didn't make a big enough impact to truly be top tier but the moments he was on screen were as good as they could have been. Also, the Red Lotus was cool as hell. I say he belongs in B tier. Are you guys going to stop trying to put side characters on the same level of Asami, or am I going to have to keep saying it? Fine, Joe, I'll bump Asami up. That's bullshit. Joe can't bitch his way into getting what he wants. What are you talking about? That happens all the time. You're weirder for thinking she should go in C than Joe is for thinking she should be in A. I'll just do this one for you guys. The only good thing this bitch did was get suffocated. That scene took my breath away. All right, do you guys just want to do a lightning round with the airbender kids? I yeah, don't see sure. why not. Iki. Very nice personality that showed flashes of Aang. The scene in season four with the Earth Empire guards was pretty funny. Jinora. She definitely had the coolest spirit-related powers in the show. Besides the nuclear weapons. Also, being the youngest airbending master is pretty tight. That scene was the perfect ending to season three.
Milo. I know comedy when I see it, and the fart jokes were really annoying. The crazy little shit vibe was hit or miss for me. He got a lot better during season four. I like how he was randomly an expert at painting. Kai. He was definitely the coolest of the new airbenders besides Boomy. Going from a street kid to an air nomad was pretty cool. He was pretty cool for a brown kid. Pema. She has the most powerful birthing hips in the entire Avatar universe. Single-handedly restoring the Air Nation. She should honestly go in S tier for cucking Lin, but I'm putting her in C anyway. All right, the lightning round is over. This one is probably going to take a while. This one is easy because she's going in S tier. That's hilarious. Explain yourself, Brandon. This bitch is overly aggressive for no reason. She doesn't listen to anybody, and she constantly makes the dumbest decisions. She's just a strong, independent woman who don't need no man coming in to save the day. You see, you're right, but you're actually wrong. Oh, my God. Cora was definitely annoying in the beginning, but she constantly got her ass beat, and she grew as a person because of it. She's not a Mary Sue. I'm not buying it. She's not as good as Aang. They are like complete opposites, to be fair. Aang was good at being the Avatar from the start. He didn't make mistakes like Korra did. Aang made plenty of mistakes. He didn't fuck up like Korra did. Aang never wanted to be the Avatar, but the people needed him, so he succeeded. Whereas Korra wanted to be the Avatar too much, a lot of people never wanted or appreciated her, so she struggled. She also just made a lot of poor decisions Aang would never make. This isn't Aang versus Korra. This is Korra compared to other Korra characters. She had the most development of anyone in the show. Are we forgetting that she severed the connection to her past lives? She also brought the spirits and the Air Nation back. Aang is always going to be more popular than Korra, and there are a lot of people that hate her and wish she never existed. Either way, she had the most impact of any character in the show. Basically, the whole identity of the show is centered around her. I would have put her in D, to be honest. I know people hate Korra, but damn, she's not that bad. Watching the show is honestly more fun when you're preying on her downfall. God damn. You must hate that Korasami is a thing. Masami would have been so much better. Kavira was pretty sick. It was about time that the show got a metal-bending villain. A metal-bending fascist dictator was not where I thought they were going to go with this show. <laughs> I think it was cool how she appeared in season three as a good guy, kind of laying the foundation for the events of the next season. There was that weird moment after she saved Cora's dad where it hangs on her face for a little bit too long with an ominous music cue. I owe you my life. Thank you, Captain. You can call me Guvira. Like, okay, this bitch is gonna be relevant somehow. Only the most subtle of foreshadowing in the legend of Cora. She was a cold bitch too. She could have had the entire Earth Kingdom, including Zhao Fu, but she had to go for Republic City, too. Also completely sacrificing Batar Jr. Batar Jr. was such a simp, bro. I think she should go in A tier. I'm not sure if she's as good as Amon. Amon has a better backstory, but Kavira had more interesting powers and motivations. I don't know about that. It's true. Amon was too overpowered. Kavira's metal bending was really cool. The slap on bracelets of doom. Her little metal bracelets of doom were very cool. You can stay in A as long as you acknowledge Amon is cooler. Amon is cooler than Kavira. That's all I needed to hear. Plea. I've got kind of a hot take on her. What is it? Just make sure not to lose your head over it. You're wrong for that one. The first time I watched that scene, it blew my mind. What was your hot take on Plea, Donald? Frankly, Barry, she's mid. They humanized her a little bit, but she was a complete tool for the plot. I don't know. She seems to be the only girl in the world that doesn't care about height. That's not going to save her from C tier. I think Ming Hua has a bit more going for her than Pali. Her ability is more unique. I also like that she was voice acted by the same lady that voices Azula. Just like Pali, she also died a horrible death. I remember that scene really shocking me when I first saw it. It was kind of left ambiguous. If she didn't die because of the electricity, she definitely died from the massive cave-in. Naga. I like Naga, but she definitely doesn't live up to Appa. Don't get me wrong, she's a really cool animal companion, but she'll never be as iconic. She does have her moments in the story, though. Notice how her relevance in the story declines by each passing season. She basically served no purpose in season four. It's not like she was underutilized. There's only so much you can do with a big dog. <laughs> the comedic moments with Naga and Pabu were what stood out for me. If you want to talk about not living up to Appa's potential, let's talk about Oogie. This thing didn't have any charm or character whatsoever. It was a huge missed opportunity not making a bond between Tenzin and Ugi like Appa and Aang. Instead, Ugi is just a mode of transportation. Juicy is going an F, if that's all right with you guys. I think that's for the best. How about Opal? She's definitely the best of Sue's kids. Opal must be the luckiest character in the entire series. 
She's Toff's granddaughter and gets chosen to be an airbender. That's nepotism at its finest. You'd know a lot about that, wouldn't you? At least none of my kids have French kissed the business end of a crack pipe. Do you really expect us to believe that? Have you seen Junior lately? Both of you, shut up. What do you guys think about Bo Lin? He's really dumb, but also lovable. Just like you, George. You really think I'm lovable? They somehow always found a way to make him relevant each season. Bolin's always doing some random shit. I always thought he was awkward, but that plays into his likability. He's also just a really powerful bender, and the fact that he can bend magma is very cool. My favorite Bolin moment was when he saved Varric from the Spirit Vine train car. Or what about when he earthbended that entire building? Is this an S tier we can all actually agree on? The show wouldn't be the same without Bolin. What about Pabu? Get out of here with this dollar store Momo. Nah, I like Pabu. Are you seriously trying to tell me you like lemurs more than ferrets? We should put him with Naga. Can we hurry this up? My bedtime is at 9.30. Yeah, when are we gonna be done with this? I need to take a nap. We've only got a few more. Why don't I trust you? You know this guy fucks. Imagine you were about to become chief of the Northern Water Tribe, but you get banished. But then it turns out your kid is the Avatar. And then you become chief of the Southern Water Tribe. He's kind of like Opal in the way that the plot absolutely blessed him. We'll say he's slightly above average. He's definitely packing, that's for sure. Is this Cora's mom? She's hot, but I'm not really sure what she's got going for her besides that. She's the definition of mid. Ryko fucking sucked. Let's not forget the part in season two where he literally cock-blocked the plot from becoming interesting. Swapping old war stories. Mr. President. I hope you're not planning to take any military action without an order from your commander-in-chief. Of course not, sir. Good. Raiko's only silver lining is that he didn't do anything massively stupid or annoying. He was kind of just a dick. Lynn was pretty sick. She's the best of the Avatar descendant characters. Leave it to Trump to love a cop. I only like the cops when they can bend metal. I think Tenzin is better, honestly. At least with Lynn, you can really tell that she's Toph's daughter. She's Toph, minus the sense of humor. She's not completely humorless. She loosens up a lot throughout the show. She kind of becomes Team Avatar's mom. I don't know about mom. Maybe more like a school trip chaperone. The Beifong family tree was part of what made seasons three and four so great. Who would have known that Toph is a terrible mom? Do you really think that she's that good? Compared to other Korra characters, yeah, she's pretty compelling. It was annoying when she trusted those dumbass detectives instead of Mako during season two. But besides that, I can only really remember good moments. She snapped at Opal. She redeemed herself for that, though. I don't think Su Yin is on the same level as Lin, but... She's pretty cool in her own right. You want to talk about powerful birthing hips? This lady is single-handedly carrying the Beifong lineage. She's kind of stuck up. You'd be a little stuck up, too, if you were the founder of a whole-ass city. Also, all the fights that she was a part of were really cool. She's an easy lock for A-tier. What do you guys think about Prince Wu? He might possibly be the fruitiest man in the entire Avatar universe. Come on, Donald. Do you seriously believe this dude doesn't get a train ran on him by huge water tribe dudes on the daily? What? what? There are better reasons to dislike Wu. He's annoying, pompous, and immature. He did wisen up towards the end, though. I don't even care. He should still go in F. Can we at least all agree that Zaheer is an easy S? He's the best villain in the show. He's probably the best villain in all of Avatar. It was a cool choice to make the antagonist of the season where you bring back the airbenders an airbender. I think he's interesting because he's got a sense of integrity and honor. He didn't need to be kind to Iki, spare Bolin and Mako, or help Korra in season four. He wasn't malicious or crazy. He just believed in his ideology. Mako. This dude went from slut to cuck way too fast. He's got to go down at least one tier for that. He's the lesser of the two brothers for sure. Also, his bending was pretty weak. Like this is supposed to be the powerful fire bending good guy? His lightning ability was on point. I don't think he's that bad. I don't think he's bad either. He just didn't have a lot of personality. I feel like they relegated him to less and less as the story went on. Season one Mako was peak Mako. How about Ju Lee? You fools talk about best girl this, best girl that without acknowledging the most loyal woman in the show. I want someone like Julie. George, you have a wife. I said what I said. She was pretty real for double-crossing Kavira. I fired many personal assistants in my day, and rarely do you find someone as competent as Julie. She served tea out of a platypus bear's ass. What more could you want from a woman? All right. Last but not least. Put him in S where he belongs, Barry. 